just got water coming out there, mate. Water is coming out. <clears throat> what did I say earlier today? If you want to buy a caravan and you can't change your tyre or your oil. Mm, or mow the lawn, you Right, see. or mow the lawn. <laughs> uh, forget it. Don't buy a caravan. Because you will need some handy dandy skills. Yeah, this is meant to be a ritzy van, isn't it? And, and simple things that are in every caravan go wrong. Mm -hmm. What sort of great brainwave is this idea? No, no. Surely they've fixed that by now. Yeah. So you just push that on there. And it just keeps going. Click, click, click. Then it's I'm just drilling holes. That, with the big drill everywhere. I, everywhere I can find, I'm drilling a hole. Can you the no? What are you doing? Nothing. Nothing. That'd be right. Nothing. Say it again. Nothing. Good. You lick your finger first. And then you put the slastic on. The slastic doesn't stick on your finger. The things you learn. What a miracle. You might need spares. You should have a kit of spares. Oh. For some unknown reason, you're always in this cabinet. Oh, but this was a must-have tool. I had to have it. I've always wanted one, you said. Maybe it's got to go that way. No. We've installed the UV chow, which is the ultimate. I don't care what happens now. <laughs> no, you know, you've got what's the your next job. So we've got this van. Yep. What's your upshot of the van? Hey, Craig and Tracy here, Caravans by the Campfire. Now we've been out camping, right, bushing it, and it's just been raining all the time. It's been spectacular. It's what you get up and sign up for a van to do, isn't it? <laughs> no. Yeah? No. It's been terrific. We've had we thought we'd show you what's happened to this van in six months of like touring around. Now this is not touring around every day, no. right? It's lots of regular trips. So we thought we'd share a bit of information with you. We'd also touch on some things. If you're just out there looking to buy a van, things you need to watch out for. So let's go inside first, because it's still raining. Mm -hmm. it's What's happening in here? Well, your first thing is your bolster bed. Okay, so this is a bolster bed? Yep. So a bolster is like another piece of mattress. Yep. So when you pull this bed out, that bit of mattress drops down there. Yep. And if you're six foot five, you can sleep right comfortably. The only thing is Except comes, there won't be much room here, will there? It comes out right to here, to the end of the bed. Yep. And that means your only way in is... All right, you can just jump through there, can you? <laughs> you just... I well, saw you doing that the other night. You just jump onto the bed. But it's not good enough for you to jump over me onto an east-west bed. Yeah, that's that right. That would give you heaps of room here, wouldn't it? I don't like the east-west bed. That's like it's, it's a no. It's a flat A lot no. of people don't. Anyway, tell me about these hatches. So the hatches, these ones here have a rain sensor. See mm -hmm. the blue light here? When that blue light's on, it's closed and it's sensing rain. Yeah. If it's flashing and it's open, it's just getting ready for rain. Yeah. It's had lots of practice and you hear it just wind itself up and down. That's all okay. But the thing with that is, what, what's, wrong, what's happened to that? It's wrecked your TV, remember? Well, the remote control is tuned oh, yes, to yes, this yes. and not the TV and can't operate the TV at yeah. all. So we've had to get rid of the TV. Yeah. Don't you? Look. Hear that? I can hear it still. But it's not activating anything, and the TV, the TV is still independent. So that's good. Yeah. It's had to go. Yeah. Okay. TV is another subject, right? <laughs> buy whatever TV you like, as long as it's going to work. If you're a mad TV fan, buy the biggest TV that will fit. Lots of people say, "Oh, it's too big. It's too big. It's taking up room." When you're not watching it, you just put it away. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. We don't watch the TV all the time. Right. So that's fine. What else? PowerPoints, this is Ooh, yours. Oh yes. Now, Zone, in their new models, have got a lot more PowerPoints. But if you're out there, there, look over this side. Zero yeah. PowerPoints. There's all this space here. We, we'd like to put our little coffee machine here, but no PowerPoints. So when you're buying a van, just have a think about it. We'd like some more PowerPoints installed here. How are we gonna go about doing that? I'm not sure yet, yep. but we'll get them in here. So if you're looking for a van, make sure you've got heaps of PowerPoints and they're all connected to your inverter. Yes. Yeah, some vans you go into, they've just got one special power point connected to an inverter. Right. So we'll look out for that. You want the whole system connected to your power supply. Yep. What else you got there? Dimmer abilities on lights. Ooh, yeah. A lot of vans we've reviewed have options of cutting out different sections. Now this is a, a couple's van. Yep. It's only 18 foot six, right? Mm -hmm. But there's no opportunity. If I get up early in the morning, I gotta turn one of these big flashy lights on, right? Yep. 
and it just <laughs> illuminates the entire van. Well, it does, which is great. Like you're, yeah. you are into lights and illuminating the area. I like lots of lights. So having said that though, you've just got to work out what lights do I need on? Mm. Is there an option to have just one switch to turn a little soft light on, maybe in the kitchen area? Or a dimmer. We've got, we got full on So LEDs we might be investigating here. that, maybe after Maybe a dimmer. That but something can... else with the lights and yep. your pet hate. Oh yeah, look here. I'm having a panic attack here. <laughs> now. <laughs> I'm on the Zone website. Just be nice in the comments, van. right? But <laughs> we've reviewed heaps of vans and I always say, these LED lights, I don't know how long they're going to last. And what do you know, last night, mm. three little buds here decided that they were leaving town. <laughs> and I tell you what, when you look in this van, it's, you can see the silicon right there. It is a part of the van. Now, how you actually change these, nobody knows. I don't know. I've reached out to a few people. I'll be talking to Zane about that. What do you do? What do you do? And this is the most used light. So the one here, just turn it on and off up there. Yeah. So there's one up there and there's one under. Yeah. Right. They both come on together, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. So the most used light. So I think uh, after this amount of time, maybe, yeah. There's no indication on any others that they look like failing. But who knows? Who knows? What well, else I we got? Light just went overnight. What else we got? What else? Light. Two en suite. This is you, this isn't me. I don't have an this issue, is me. but you do. You get in this ensuite, right? And again, it's a couple's van. So if you're buying anything under 19 foot. It's that wide. Mm, yeah. It's pretty good. It's pretty wide, but it's not wide that way. Like if you get in there, we can't see anything. You better yeah. get out. Yeah, you have to get in there. Yeah. If you get in here, look. Toilet, washing machine. Yeah, toilet roll holder. So. You've got to fit yourself in this little space, not to mention like when you've had a shower. Now the shower is massive, right? You can see in the shower, a little bit dark in there, but it's absolutely massive. Let me turn it on. Yeah. So what I do now, I have a shower and then I just stay in there, reach out here, get the towel and um, dry myself in there. And then I've got to make a quick dash down there to get some clothes because this area in here, mate, I just, you know, I guess if you're smaller and skinnier, mm. not everyone's six two and 120 kilos. That's right. Yeah. Gas, everything's right here, microwave. Mm -hmm. What I would consider is a three-in-one. So a lot of lot of vans now are going to fully electric. Yeah, so they've got induction, induction cooktops. Or they've got the induction out and it sits in a drawer and you just put yeah, it on the Portable bench. one, so you get a lot more vent space. So you want to have a real mind. careful thing. Do I need an oven? Mm. A lot of vans have got ovens. The latest go is you see people driving around and they've got their thermomix and then they've got their air fryer. They've got an air fryer. Then you've got a microwave, and then you've got an oven. So now Breville have, and I think Breville, there's only two companies, but Breville have one, and it's a microwave, air fryer, and convection oven. So I would be thinking seriously about yeah. that option. Yeah. Yeah. What else is going on? Okay. Lounge so area is fine, table's yeah. fine. That all works. Everything works. It's functional Everything works. for the, the size fridge. of the van. What about the fridge? I love it. The fridge is... This well, Bushman fridge. It wasn't we're my favourite when we came to the van. It was the one thing I didn't really like about yeah. it. We are a little bit iffy about this brand. However, look at that up there. See that setting? It's just sitting on three and it goes up to nine. Yeah? Mm. And it just chugs along. No problem whatsoever. What else is in here? Everything's fine? Well, there's some things that we don't, haven't used much in the van. What are they? And that is the air conditioning and the washing machine. Yeah. So you see here, you boot air conditioner and a washing machine. I love this washing machine, mate. When you put it on the quick cycle, yeah, it's like 20 litres of water and 25 minutes. Mm. And you get like, you know, our week's worth of washing, which is yeah, not much for us. No. Yeah. I think it's good. But do you use it a lot? No. If you had kids? If you were traveling full time, yes, you'd be using it, but we're not. And if you go away seven days, you've got more than enough storage and more than an, an ample clothes to go with you. You don't necessarily need to be using it. That's why we're not using it. Air conditioning, um, well, that's got to do with the insulation of the van, I think. Yeah, now talking about insulation of vans, mm. right? <clears throat> I think this is a composite van. Yes. Yeah, and all the vans we've reviewed 
of either being cold or hot and required an excessive amount of either heating or cooling down. Yep. Except for this one. Yes. We've been in the 35 degrees. We've right? been in zero degrees. We've been in the zero degrees. And minus. Yeah, we've taken vans out week after week to the same locations in the same temperatures and we've either been cold or just way too hot. Yeah. And this van here, to give you an idea, if you're at zero degrees somewhere, sometimes you don't even need the heater on. No. Yeah. Other times you might crank the heater on. To take the edge off. It'll only be 10 or 11 degrees. Yeah. And this is a gas heater, gas hot water system. Yeah. So that works fine. And I'd imagine if you had a diesel heater, you wouldn't have that on very high either. There's a lot of reasons yeah. for that. Like this doesn't but have very, it doesn't have a lot of vents in it. Yeah, There's the van a, doesn't have vents. It has safety vents, vents under the bed yeah. for gas. It Definitely. does have two other vents, right? There's one above the fridge, yeah, yeah, which is open, and then there's one in the bathroom, yes, which we have open at the moment yes. that you can close. It's got a little cap that goes on it. Yeah. So there is some venting, but we have the heater on and we just crack the window open half the time. Yeah. There's never any condensation. Uh, now, talking about condensation in the kitchen. Yes, there is right. in the kitchen. When you're cooking, there are no overhead extraction units. No. This is our extraction unit. <laughs> <laughs> the big window. Yes, that's it. and that's why it's open a lot. Like, it's open a lot. Yeah. So, in Zone's quest to have a dust-free van, With there's no dust suppression, nothing in here, right? There's no overhead extraction unit here. So I don't know, does it need one, does it not need one? If you're out there looking for a van, just keep all those things in mind, right? Mm. You've got an extraction unit, you're gonna have more vents outside. So if you're going long-term traveling in the dirt, yep. you're gonna be taping up those vents. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else inside? You like everything? The floor? The floor. Darker floor, floor. color, seems to be fine. Hides a little bit of the dirt. Doesn't show this much of the dirt. You just got to keep sweeping it out every day. So think carefully about your colours. This is a pretty white van, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I used to refer to it as the operating surgery. But now, and again, we don't like putting things on the van. Yeah. You there? Yes, I'm just looking Hello? at this. Yes, I'm just looking at your list that you've written. You might have seen a couple of shorts of ours where we're putting these devices on. What are they? Fusion locks. Mate, that's the world's best money maker I've ever heard of, I think, fusion locks. Mm -hmm. So an hour has passed by since we decided to put the fusion lock in the van and we're still going. Mm. I'd rather park the van with um, <laughs> you giving directions <laughs> than muck around with the fusion lock and where it's going to go. <laughs> or what it's being used for. So that's there. But we did relent and we got some of these. Yep. Yep. Now these pouches, they're not the cheapest thing around. No. But there's one either side of the bed. Yep. There's one up here near the door, just for a couple of little trinkets. Mm -hmm. And what do you got to say about those? Well, there's. I thought like, we didn't need any of this stuff. I didn't think we needed them either, but we relented and put them in, and now I love them. <laughs> I think they're fantastic. Can't do yeah. without them. I think you ordered ordered some more even. There's two more coming, yes. But um, they are a good thing. Yeah. yeah no doubt about that. Yep. Yeah. No doubt about that. If you're out there looking for a van. You're either going to be confronted by someone saying, let's get diesel everything, diesel hot water, diesel heating, uh, fully electric cooking facilities. That's, that's all fantastic. Right? Um, on the other hand, you'll get the container units where they hold like 17 to 22 to 23 litres of hot water mm -hmm. that are gas heated or electric. You can gas or electric. You know, you're in a caravan park, you can plug the electricity in. You have a shower and you're a lady with long hair or a guy with long hair and you want to wash your hair and put all that U-butte stuff in it, yeah. right? Uh, what happens then? How long do you have? Oh, not long. Run out of water. Even though, even if you're switching it off and soaping your hair up and switching off and soaping yourself up, you are out of hot water by the time you finish the process. So I think you can get that type of unit or you can get the instant hot water. Yeah. Which I would just thoroughly recommend. Yeah. Yeah, instant hot water. If you've got kids and they're, you know, you're gonna have time limits on showers and whatnot, but you don't wanna be getting stuck there mm -hmm. with the conditioner in your hair, yeah. shampoo or whatever, and you run into hot water. So yeah. I think the instant gas hot water would be good. Okay. But you just need to investigate thoroughly which one's gonna be best for you. We're quite happy with this one, but I gotta wait like 10 or 15 minutes after. Yeah, that's the other issue. To have another shower. Yeah. Which is no big deal, what's the big deal? Well, these if you're but on a time thing. You've if got you're to after something. convenience and time, you just got to organise yourself one. Well. Yeah. Okay. I do like the thing. Mm. Another thing, 
<laughs> See all our, we've got three 90 litre water tanks in here. What you've got to be really careful of is they're all plumbed separately, so they're not connected to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you just got to check how much water you got. If, you, if you've used 70 litres in one tank and then you're going to go and have a shower or put the washing machine on, chances are you may well run out of water. So you've got to switch over to the right tank. I'd like some better way of doing that. Yeah. Just to make sure. So you sort of want them connected and then you don't want them connected if you get some contaminated water or whatnot. Anyway, up to you. Well, the first thing you come to is the one thing that you thought you hated but now you love. Yeah. The barbecue. This sizzler barbecue. We've got a Weber Q, right, sitting at home. And um, I don't think I'll be swapping it out for this one because this one here is just a beauty. Like it's got a support table happening. Yeah. You can use this also as a bit of an oven, which is a real bonus. And I find those Weber Qs or the baby Qs, you can't get enough heat in them not to even sear your bloody steak properly half the time. Okay. Particularly if it's windy and you're outdoors and it's cold. And, and they're factors that are important when you've got a caravan. Yeah. Yeah. So you want a barbecue that works good. And this one, million bucks, didn't work too well when we first got it, but after a little bit of maintenance, and uh, maintenance is key, isn't it? Oh, must be. Yeah. And must these be. barbecues <laughs> here, don't leave them go too long before you clean them. But this twists around and it's on a slide and it just goes back in there. So well worth this sort of product. Next one, toolbox. Now, this is not the current version of toolbox on the zone. Okay. No. They've got those mode toolboxes now and other different metal With ones the you can buy. That. My big beef about a toolbox is when you first get it, you're very excited. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, it's a big toolbox. I can put a lot of stuff in it. What ha and I've got two slides. What actually happens <laughs> is this. Is look, look. It just turns into a shit fight. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Couple of slides there, pull that out. There's no way I can pull that out with all that rubbish on top there. No. So what I'd like to see is a little bit better use of space and you see a lot of vans now on toolboxes that have different shelf levels or they'll have a split section put the chairs up there put this on the top or they have another drawer on the top mm -hmm. if you're a guy out there toolboxes are important and you want them to be put together in a way where you can be putting stuff away easy and simply yeah okay. i think that's a big thing your next one is one of your favorites what's that lights Oh, yeah. Toolbox, front of yeah. van, rear of van, and yeah. on the offside near the toilet. Let me just talk about lights for a minute. So we've got these outdoor lights. There's three of them on the side yep. of the van. Make sure you have enough lights. If you see a van with just one light, it's not going to be enough for you. You'll be wanting more lights on there. This here is fine for outside, and inside in the tunnel boot, there's lighting. But you come around the toolbox, there's no lighting. Come to the mm -hmm. front of the van, there's no lights on the front. So if you're unhitching in the dark, or if you want to come around here in the night and do something. So again, I think we'll be putting some more lights on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Well, some kind of light you will be. What do you reckon? Well, we've got some light bars. I do like the toolbox. Like this, this top bit up here, we can stop on the side of the road, cut up some big logs, put them on there. And then when you get to the campsite, you cut them up. Right, let's talk about gas bottles. Mm. Gas now, bottles, yeah. These gas found. bottles are four kilo, 3.7 kilos or something. Mm -hmm. Now. We, for some reason, tend to run out of this gas pretty quickly. We've run out twice. I think we leave the hot water system on yeah. without caring too much. Speaking of which, it's still on. We might I'm have to be a bit more frugal with that. Mm. Um, no gauges here, so you don't really know. You can do the old tricks and put the hot water on and see where the condensation is in the morning, you know, buy one of those magnetic things which don't work too well. Get one of those gauges up here which tend to freak out after three months in the weather. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but the point is, if you want swap and go bottles, you've got to make sure that this bracket system down here actually handles the different size bottles. This one here is made for this size bottle. So if I go sh to, what is it? Swap and go. Swap and go. I might get the same size bottle, but it'll be fatter, stubbier, shorter. Or taller. Yeah. Same thing happens with the nine kilo bottles. Mm -hmm. You go in and sometimes the swap and go, they're wider or they're narrower and they're taller. Mm. So, you know, looking around here in the country, everyone fills these bottles up. But on in the, the city, Coast, mm. in the cities, you've got to shop around a little bit further. Like you can go to Bunnings, yeah. BCF, those kind oh, of places. We've gone to about, I don't know, five or six garages yeah. and go in, oh, we want to do this. No, we only do swap and go goodbye. 
It's yeah. literally that is it end of conversation. Yeah, that's right. So you just got to be prepared to fuss around a little bit. Yeah. When you get them filled manually, particularly in the country, it's way cheaper than swap and go. So if you're into gas, just think about those things when you're getting a van. Here we are, the big blackjack, mate. Oh, that's one of your faves. Let's take this off. This is my favorite piece of equipment on the van. Nelly, second favorite. Yeah, so this is just up and down. I'm not going to activate it now because I've disconnected the power. You it's just... had some maintenance since we um, bought the van. Oh, it has had, yeah. I've got it. some new switches. And it's got a new... A new thing up here in a plastic case. And when it's got no switch, it looks like um, Darth Vader. Yeah, it does look a bit Darth Vader-ish. <laughs> so it yeah. just lifts the van up and puts it down. Nice and simply. No fuss anywhere at any park. And I'm not a jockey wheel fan. If you watch any one of our videos, I've trashed 10 jockey wheels, I think. Yes, you You just don't know where the van's going to go. You're mucking around, they're hard to wind up. Who wants that kind of stuff? Yep. See these here, you've got this on here. You bought this the other day, right? Yeah, I some of these really well. some of these bags, we don't know what we're using it for yet, but we've just got some recycling. Just got recycling in it. Um, a lot of these will fit inside. These don't quite fit inside because we've got these jerry can holders here. And you can't move this forward any further, so just have a think what you want to do because these will get a lot of dirt and rubbish on them. Mm -hmm. But being centralised on the back of the car, we've found already, and we've been on dirt tracks and red dirt, nothing's happened to that back. No, it's so, really good. Really A lot more positive it. than I was thinking it was going to be. I thought it would be trashed after five minutes. No, the tunnel boot, hold on. See in here? This is a long cabinet, the full length of the tunnel boot. You can put your anti-flap kit in there. You know, umbrellas, any other long poles you've got, fishing rods, that kind of stuff, they can go in there. So have a think about that when you're looking at a van. Does it have something sensible like that in it? I think that's great. This is your rear light that you were talking about. Oh, the light on the yeah. off side. Now talk about lights. A lot of vans have lights on the off side here, at least one light. So if you come around and you're doing something behind the fridge, yeah, that's a really great vent for the fridge. One thing I would thoroughly recommend is if you're a constant traveller, those new composting toilets would be the way to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you're just casual or you're going away for a holiday, these other simple systems, right? Just put it in, take it out, away you go. I would thoroughly recommend you have a spare one because mm -hmm. you never know where you're going to be. So. If you don't have a dump point, it's getting full, you don't know what to do, we have a spare one in the front there, so we're not overly worried. So yeah, never drive past a dump point or a water filling station or a petrol station. Is that right? That's right, those are three Do all points. those things, even if it's half full. Right? And carry a spare, and it is about 300 bucks, maybe a little bit more, but I think well worthwhile, we just keep it in our tunnel boot. Easy to swap out. The back here again, there's no light. No light. So. Whether it's an option or not, I'd like a light. Safety Dave camera's fantastic. Two things here I think are really good. One is this ladder. Mm -hmm. I see so many people on the back of their van, they've got the step ladder. And the step ladder's as wide as the van. And I'm thinking, what do they want that for? Right, sure, you may have to reach up here sometimes to the awning. That's it. If you're shorter, you've got to have a step ladder or something. So I get that. But when it comes to cleaning your solar panels, this ladder, it just pops down, climb up. We have 380 watt, I think they are, solar panels on here. You just get up there, you can walk on the roof, no problem whatsoever. Now, I don't know whether you can walk on every van roof, but this one, you can walk on comfortably. So, I just get up there every two or three weeks, give them a little dust off. No problem. So if you can get a ladder option on your van, I'd be taking it before I'd be getting twin wheel carriers. Mm -hmm. Talking about that, see here? This is just, lots of people got rear dirt bags. Zone sent us this one when mm -hmm. we got, bought this van. Yes, very Which nice. is excellent, thank you. Um, now, we've been testing it out, I guess. It's worked well. We've got a little plastic bin in here. Mm -hmm. So those of you who are out there, if you don't have a little plastic bin in here, what happens to this whole bag? It just gets caked full of rubbish and muck. Mm -hmm. And then you either don't care about it or you're taking it off and cleaning it every now and again. So we just have that open, pop the rubbish in, close it up. It's no problem at all. 
We've got another one at home, haven't we? Crash pad. Yeah, we've got That's the one we used to use. Yeah. And um, it's just sitting there ready in case this doesn't work. It's a bit crooked, Dory. It is a bit crooked. Tends to, they all tend to move a little bit over yeah. time. Anyway, that's okay. That's fine. We so I'd love a light. We probably do need a smaller um, plastic container in there, but I can't really yeah. find one anywhere at the moment. So Rear bars. Let's just talk about rear bars. Mm -hmm. This one here, basic. Yeah, it's got the connector here. You can put a bike rack on. Mm -hmm. That's all fine. Okay, lots of people out there are doing little mods on the back. They want to put a boat. They want to put a wood container. They want to put a little toolbox. They don't box. want to put a boat. They want to put a motor. Yeah, motor. You know <laughs> what I mean. They want to put a motor. Right, whatever it is on the back here. So just have a think when you're buying a van. Is this the right setup for you? What I love, I'm going to mention another brand here. Yes, I'm going to. They're on the titanium van. I'm trying to get them interested in making a rear bar that will fit in here because they make things for other people. And they've got a great external table thing as well, which has just come out. Um, both those products are good, but it has everything on the back. You can put your little bits of wood, you can put your jerry can, your jerry can all like the stuff. Place for like hoses and stuff. Looks magnificent. So have a think about what you want on the back of your van. Okay. And the last thing you read. Just a little thing here. Mm -hmm. See these ropes, the tie downs? Some people are not too fussy about these. Just get any tie down you like. But these ones here, you can buy 50 different brands, right? Yeah, the ratchet, I think they've got to be the best idea out. No mucking around, mate. Just do that. Easy to unlatch. Yeah, away you go. You know, if you want to do all the other tie down wraps and whatnot, please yourself. Uh, also, everyone's got an external. Well, what? not everyone, people, people. clotheslines. Number one mod. Let's put a clothesline on the van. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you get some wire and everything, and that's good. Just be aware, a couple of things. If you've got a van that sits on top of the chassis, you'll have a door that's much higher. So if you put this on permanently, this clothesline, when you roll this awning up, it's going to get caught on the bottom of the door there, which is not really what you want. So this, this one removable. here, this one here is just removable. We just take it down, put it up, roll it up, no problem whatsoever. I think if you don't have electric awning, and that's an option, you're crazy. Yeah, it's just so easy. There's two types. There's the cheaper type, which we reviewed was on that hybrid van. Yes. You know, where, where it just rolled itself out, you held onto it, and then you put the legs down here, so there was no interference. Mm -hmm. The other ones are the big beauty ones, where you just hit the button, out they come. But they have bits of metal here, so you've got to watch out when you're walking around, you don't bang yourself on them. Mm -hmm. And the, the newer ones, you can pull down on one end and change the adjustment so that you can alter the awning so when it's raining, just comes out one end. A lot of them just come out and they're stuck there, so you you got no option. You get an electric awning. Nothing wrong with this awning. Works a treat as a basic awning, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, over here. What do we like? Well, you like the airbags. Yeah. There's a few few extras that we've put on here, right? We've changed out the old USB ports here to be USB and USB C, which enables you to use all the current modern day cords, you know, this end, which is a good thing. And we dismounted a few snap lock things here. That's all good. But the airbags, they are crazy good, mm -hmm. aren't they? Yes. If you have, your favourite toy. If you have an option, I would take airbags over another lithium battery. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I would comfortably. Because the way these things tow, up, down, up, the way they tow on the road is crazy. Yeah, very good. And you can adjust the ride height. You can get yourself out of little difficult situations if you're off-road by using those airbags mm -hmm. to move it maybe this side away from a tight tree or something like that. But when you come to the campground, you just back her in, take her off, and it's either one side up and down, isn't it? Yep. How long does that take? You could do it. Two seconds. Well, I have done it. Two or three seconds. I'll tell you what, it's life-changing. There's never any arguments. Back it up onto this ramp, back it onto that ramp, it needs to be a bit higher there, pull it down. We have enough trouble working out what campsite we're going to stay at, <laughs> let alone worrying about how we're leveling up the van. Mm -hmm. So, Cruise Master, doesn't matter where it's Cruise Master, any, any, off, any airbag system is going to be the way to go. Yep. 
I'd be choosing that straight away. The door. Probably the last thing. These doors here, this is a Dometic door, right? They're on my favorite van, check out Silver Line. Um, and they go in like a hatch. They sit right in there. One problem with them is they're all white. They only come one color, white. That's fine. I've never seen a different color, yeah. So they're on here, they're on Silver Lines, they're on a lot of other vans, a lot of other composite vans. They're on nearly every camper van mm -hmm. that you can find, aren't they? Oh, yes. Yeah. Easy look here. You just open the glass, goes back there, magnetic. Couple of things. This is like crim proof mesh. Yeah. This is mesh, okay? If, you, if you're places where there are really tiny midges, mm. you may well have to get a little cover with the finer mesh. I've mm. seen a lot of people mention that. Yeah, nice little awning. This goes up and down. When you get in the van to lock it, just turn that, it's locked. Yeah, no keys, no everything like that. You know, there's, you know, the thing I hate about doors, is you know the ones where you gotta turn it up here and then you gotta turn the key this way and turn it up there and twist it up and then pull it down? There's none of that with these. Just in you go, no problem whatsoever. We wanted a second hand van for any number of reasons. If you wanna watch any of those videos, just jump on our channel and check them out, how we got to this stage. But, so we've got this van. Yep. What's your upshot of the van? So we just walked around, mentioned a fair few things. I still think it's great. Yeah. I have no drums with it whatsoever. It is pretty good. I think you're in love with it. No, I'm not. I just think it's a, it's a van. It's, it's, to me, a van is just another thing. It's like a car. Yeah. I, I'm not that person who takes the emotional attachment to it. But. Oh, well, that's okay. So, yeah. So how come you're so attached? No, because I knew it was the best <laughs> one to buy. The best one? Yeah. For us, it fit everything that we wanted. Yeah, it did. Um, and even though there's things like the brand itself has moved on like into a new model and some of the things we've spoken about that are a little bit painful to get used to have been fixed in the new models. So, mm. but you just adjust. So how do you feel about hiring the van out? This van's for hire. Um, no problems. Yeah. The more you use the stuff, the stuff's made to be used. It needs to be used. It can't just sit dormant. Yeah. The more it sits dormant, the more you're going to have issues. I think you're, you're probably right there. It seems to be going okay, doesn't it? Yeah, so like it's turned on, people take it out. I don't know, sometimes, probably once a month it's probably going out on trips and most of the time it's going out with people that are looking to buy a zone. Yeah. Actually, probably all the time it's gone out with people wanting to buy a zone and they yeah. want to feel it for themselves before they spend all their money on a zone. Yeah. And that's what they're doing, so. I think, look, the overall thing for me is the composite construction of the van compared to all other vans that we've reviewed. Mm -hmm. It's just like all around. It seems yeah. to go the distance, easy to clean, easy to polish up. Yep. Um, everything works fine. It's good. Insulation is great. Oh, it is. Insulation, you're wrapped about the towing capabilities, which goes to the airbags. Yeah. and Technology's really rushing ahead. And I've got no doubt this is a good product. Oh, look, it's, it's a, you can, you, every time you, in it you can bring it back to new every single time yeah. there's no drama about it and that yeah. was one thing we looked at because if you're looking at secondhand vans you want it to be able to stay yeah in a really good condition because that's going to keep the real sale value of your van yeah so it's got to be easy to clean easy to maintain come back to pristine that is good and this does it it just does it every single time you can dirty it up and next thing you clean it up and it looks like a brand new looks new okay well, we've got to head off, pack up. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little summary of what we've been up to the last six months with this van and how it's been performing. And you've got some tips for yourself if you want to buy your own van. Okay, things to look out for. Righto, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Just to take the family out. Or for two people. Oh, there's a bit of rope to hang on to.